Hi everyone, welcome to Memory Keeping Monday from twopeasinabucket.com. This is Lisa Truesdell, and in this week's video, I'll be showing you some cool techniques for coloring wood embellishments and then using them on a layout. For this week's project, I'm basically combining some of my favorite bits and pieces that were floating around my desk with a few new goodies from October afternoon. I've used this Crate Storyteller stripe paper on so many pages, but I love it so much that I just can't stop reaching for it. It was a perfect starting point to pull together a bright and fun collection that will work well with my photo. I love to use wood embellishments as is. They're my go-to embellishment for adding a little texture to a project. But there are also a lot of ways you can alter them, and I wanted to share a few today. I'll be using mist, chalk ink, embossing powder, and stamps to show you some different looks that you can get with wood veneer. This wood heart button is by Prima. It comes in a pack of different shapes. These are actually printed on the front, but when the color or pattern doesn't match my project, I like to turn them over and use the plain wood side. These buttons are a darker wood than some other embellishments, so you'll want to use darker mist colors. I love that they have a fairly prominent wood grain. It shows through the color once they're misted. This frame is by Studio Calico and we'll be misting it as well. I just hold the mist about four to six inches away and spray each embellishment a couple of times. Here's a look at the misted wood next to the natural. The veneer takes color really well. Stamping is a perfect way to add pattern as well as color to your veneer embellishments. This technique works better on the larger wood pieces and you'll want to match the scale of your stamp to the size of the veneer. I found that the Prima chalk inks give a good clear image on wood with no bleeding. For this butterfly, I'll be adding a stamped word. Make sure you don't apply too much pressure or rock the stamp back and forth and you'll get a perfect image. Background stamps are a good way to get an all over design on your veneer. On this wood person, I'm using part of a background stamp by Basic Gray. I actually bought this stamp knowing that I wanted to cut it into separate pieces. It has so many fun patterns. If you'd like to try this, just make sure you have a sharp pair of scissors and cut carefully. I'm using the Prima Chalk Inks here as well. This one is called Turquoise Stone. I love the aqua color against the natural wood. While these Prima inks work well with stamps on veneer, they also do a really good job on recoloring them. Just take the pad and press it against the veneer. Here's a variation on that. These wood buttons by American Crafts have a raised edge. I'm using the Prima ink to recolor just that part. Since these ink pads are small and have a pointed tip, it's easy to keep the ink just where you want it. This is a great way to add a pop of color on a wood accent. The last technique we'll be doing with the veneer is embossing. Just press your Versamark pad against the veneer and then sprinkle the embossing powder over it. Shake off the excess, then hit it with your heat gun. I used a bit of adhesive to stick it to my scrap paper while doing this so it wouldn't blow away. I have to admit that I really like the idea of embossing, but I'm usually too lazy of a stamper to actually do it on my pages. The effect is so cool on the veneer that I may just have to break out my heat gun more often. Now that we've learned all of the techniques, I thought I'd give you another look at the finished products. Next up, I'll be making a layout from start to finish and using some of these embellishments as accents. When I was cleaning up my desk recently, I found this piece of paper left over from a die cut heart layered over this wood grain pattern paper. I had cut out the heart for another project and saved the negative just in case I could use it somewhere else. These two ended up together on accident, but I really love the combination. The bright stripes make an awesome contrast against the weathered wood. I knew this would be a good starting point for my layout. I'm adding the heart and wood grain paper to the left side of the layout. It's going to be a pretty strong focal point for the page, and I don't want to fight that. I'm going to add a strip of neutral colored text paper from October afternoon to fill in the strip across the middle of the page. These two pattern papers will be where we're going to layer the bulk of the other items on the layout. When you stop and look at what I've done so far, you'll see that there's no natural stopping point on the right side of the layout. 
the text just draws your eye right off the page. I'll add a strip of aqua polka dot paper to that side to counteract that effect. Now I'm ready to add another layer to this page. I added some machine stitching to the layout, straight lines all the way across the middle of these papers. I went under both the heart die cut and the strip of aqua paper. I really wanted to ground the two neutral papers together and establish them as part of the background of the page. The text paper will be a perfect background for my photo. You'll notice I'm taking the time to line it up so that it's at the same angle as the pattern paper. Next, I'll add a strip of a Hambly overlay right along the bottom. I'm adding it under the wood grain and aqua paper so that it's visually on the same layer as the text paper. I was really excited when I saw these arrow-shaped sticky notes in the two-piece shopping section. I thought they'd be a fun way to add a little journaling here and there to my Project Life album. Now that I have them, I'm loving them for layouts too. You can use them as is or change the color with a little mist. For this page, I'm going to stamp on one and then add it to the middle of the heart. I'm using the same basic gray background stamp that I showed you earlier. These triangles are one of my favorite patterns right now. If you're using the Prima Chalk ink like I am, be careful right after you stamp. This ink needs a bit of time to dry. I want to add a few stamped images to the background of this page. I'm starting with the new Stepping Stone Alphabet from Studio Calico. I want to use it to add a title above my photo. This set comes with two alphabets. One's an outline and one's a solid. You can use them alone or together. They're sized to layer perfectly, but I like to slightly offset the outline from the solid. If you're on Pinterest, you've probably seen the tutorial for how to do this with text in Photoshop floating around. I feel like I see it repinned a couple of times a day. This is a low-tech way to get the same look. I love these stamped tone-on-tone -tone with similar colored inks, but today I'm layering a gray outline over aqua solid letters. I stamped this note stamp from L Studio on some graph pattern paper and cut it out. I want to tuck it under the wood grain paper. Doing it this way instead of stamping straight onto the background lets me bend it up a little for dimension and makes it look more like a real file tab. My last stamped image will be a label stamp from Studio AE. But before I add it, I want to add my pattern paper border to the bottom of the page so I know where the image should go. I didn't get a good clean image on my first try, so I re-inked the stamp and lined it up carefully and tried again. If I hadn't managed to get a good image the second time, I would have stamped it on the same paper that I used for the note stamp and then cut it out and added it to the page. It's always good to have a plan B when stamping is involved. I added a border along the top of my page and a little washi to the photo, and now I'm ready to add in some 3D embellishments. I'm starting with an arrow clip and layering it over the arrow sticky note. Reinforcing the arrows over here helps move your eye away from the big bright heart and over to the photo and journaling. I'll also use an embossed wood veneer arrow. Next, I'm adding a star brad and a little embossed wood star up by the notes tab. And by the way, I find that a glue pen is the best way to stick these tiny stars to a page. Over by my photo, I'm adding a stamped veneer heart, a brad with a two on it, and more embossed stars. You'll notice that these groupings create a visual triangle on the page and that each one has a metal element and an embossed wood element. This is a good way to make sure your embellishments are visually balanced on your layout. I'll also add a misted veneer starburst and an inked button to the bottom of the heart. The heart is bold enough to carry off a big accent like this, and I love how it finishes off the page. Here's a look at the finished heart element. The colors and textures here work together to catch your interest when you first look at the page, and the arrows add a bit of motion to bring your attention over to the photo and journaling. 
Thank you for joining me today. I hope I've inspired you to try altering wood embellishments. The techniques I've shared here are just the beginning, so get out your ink and paints and stamps and see what you can do. Enjoy experimenting, and I hope we'll see you next week for another Memory Keeping Monday here at twopeasinabucket.com.